they got to be putting something in it because it's right next to McDonald's where I get with Cedric's laughing his ass off right on, bro. But I mean, it's right next to McDonald's. That's the coffee that I drink. And yeah, McDonald's gets busy for coffee, but Tim Hortons, it's lined up to this from like, like a block down. It's lined up and I'm like, what are they putting in this? <laughs> they got to be putting something in it because, but that's the difference in, in the experience of going to eat out in an actual restaurant where you can have that relationship if you're a regular and you can develop those kinds of belly to belly connections and in the entrepreneurial world that's vital not not anybody who tells you out there you can make money with this automated system bullshit because relationships customer appreciation service is not automated and you can't automate that process you you can't you can't automate that you, you can't automate human connection it just doesn't work that way Thank God it doesn't work that way. Imagine how shallow everyone would be if uh, human connections were <laughs> automated. Or if they were bought. Yeah, exactly. Computer Which they're out there. Go ahead, Kareem. Oh. Computers are not sentient beings. Yeah, they're smart. They can do cool stuff. They can make videos or crash them. But <laughs> Thanks, Kareem. <laughs> Bring that up again. But they're not... They can't feel like how yeah. we had this heartfelt. We went from a crazy conversation to a heartfelt conversation, engaging the reaction, seeing what's going on, and now we can identify hard points. People don't have that same connection anymore, so corporations go out and try and figure it out. But what do they miss when they're looking for that hardship? When they're looking for that feeling, they miss how do you create that human interaction? How do you get people together and have them just talk? Imagine that. <laughs> you, know, you actually can do that like we're doing here you break into an entrepreneurial or if you're not an entrepreneur just a new way of thinking mm -hmm. I think it just kind of happens like that if you really get into some good deep good conversations and get people interested and energized about what you talk about all of a sudden somebody comes up with an idea yeah even if you're not intentionally trying to have a mastermind but a lot of times you can have something come up um, also, I was going to segue into a thought that I was just thinking about. Uh, has any of you seen the movie Wally? -E? Have I? Oh God, years ago. It's older, right? It's a little bit older, but it, it shows where you know the Earth got so bad shape, and they went off and set off on this like uh, whatever how long of a trip, and everything was automated. The people, the humans. They got wow. to where they relied on all the automation in the spaceship that they went, and they sat okay. in these chairs, became big blobs, and everything was done for them. And so, therefore, you know, but they didn't really interact or do or stuff. They were always kind of like we're headed towards now, where you see kids constantly on their phone, but they don't oh, really interact. Yeah. You oh, know? I know, it's getting crazy. And in it's... that, so we're losing that too. Yes. And people are getting trained into that so to speak oh i know and, and just to say just to kind of bridge your your point together here with the one i'm going to make dan is it's been this is how this the, the cons, uh, corporations have planned it because the more people rely on these devices to do everything for them the more they sell um and <laughs> i actually got another funny story for you guys um and then I'll let somebody else talk for like 20 minutes. I was just going to say I'm something about the Twilight Zone. It reminded me of an episode that I saw of the Twilight Zone. Was, oh, that's a good show, Carl. It was something about um, the man. He didn't have to go anywhere. They would bring his food to him. They, he just had to lay around all the time. and do absolutely, He didn't get big, but, you know, it was like. That was the way that, that they had him. He, he didn't even go out for exercise. He just locked in the room. And it was something to do with, you know, waiting on man or something. I think that was the name it was. You know, where the, that's all they did is wait on. They weren't machines. It was like, well, probably robots, perhaps machine type. You know, I mean, they look like human figures. They bring them their food. This is your food. Wow. Well, I don't want to eat it, he says. I mean, it's like this world is getting to be all programmed. I know, man. It's crazy. I mean, just like. Even the football game, they said that there's something to do with that. That's got your eyes always attached to the, you know, it's the device. You're always looking at it, wanting to see what's happening. You can't miss a moment. Yeah. But then I, um, 
that, but then again, time is the most important asset. Yes, it is. You and never so get time back. Yeah, and you think about the wasted time asset combination compared to what you actually get out of your day. That's right. And you wind up, you sit in front of the computer for eight hours, but you really only get four because you're distracted by something that is on it, around you. Just like what oh. that Frank Hansen and that when I was doing that business, it was the ambience that I was surrounded by as well as, you know, I mean, if you got a TV set going in the background, you got music going in the background, you're really not into what, well, maybe the music could be all right, but if you're watching the TV, that means you've got to actually visualize that mm -hmm. TV and how you're going to do a business visualizing a TV or watching like TV. Yeah, exactly. No, you can't. No. Um, and they've actually been saying now in the in, in school in the school system that students are, are only retaining 45% of the information that they read on a tablet as opposed to holding a textbook. So I mean that that tells you something right there. If, if a student is losing 55% of their uh, knowledge from whatever they're, the course they're studying because they're not using textbooks. You think maybe we might want to bring textbooks back into the classroom, guys? I think so. I think um, so. Because human beings, we're not meant to run on having everything done for us. The the, the art of convenience is making is, is actually devolving consciousness, in my opinion. Everybody says, no, this is progression. No, man, it's regression in a lot of ways. Because if you need a machine to do everything, if, to do things so much for you, what's going to happen if you end up without all that stuff? If you've got to be out in the, in, in the middle of nowhere, survival, that is slowly being stripped away from us. And that's why we got to unplug, get out there. Like I do that all the time. I'm not constantly plugged in. Um, I got to be outside. I got to be out doing stuff. I got to be out exercising. I got to be like, I have to go camping. I absolutely make it a priority to go camping at least for two weeks out of the summer. And there's times when I just go by myself. I bring my cats and I just go by myself because I'm like, this is what life is supposed to be like. That's because you need that time. I do. I do. Need if you that don't time. get that, and it's like, we all need that, believe it or not, it, in meditation because yeah. we got this third eyeball. <laughs> yeah, the third eye. Yeah, we, dude. We don't, we don't see it, but it's our focus eineball. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If we oh, yeah, the pineal focus gland. Eyeball in the focus. Yep. In the vortex, then we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to focus on everything that we have to do in a day's right. time. That's so right. you have to program your mind before your mind gets programmed by something else of the day. That's right. So in other words, the first thing you do is say, well, I'm going to program my mind, maybe taking a walk, mm -hmm. nice, peaceful, calm walk in the woods. You know what I'm saying? Maybe throw in a, a, a meditation of the ocean. That sounds really great to me. I always like to listen. You know, the crashing of the ebbing in the water. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's it, relaxing. It's all that stuff in nature that is given to us as a natural meditation to be able to operate that third eye from because Wayne Dyer was the one that mentioned about the third eye. We don't see that eye, but it's our focus eye. Oh, it is. Yep. Yep. You're right. You're right. Well, that brings me into our next point. Number five, take specific notes on feedback. So it should go without saying that a notebook and a pen can be a great ally of an involved mastermind because there might be millions of questions and thoughts and it's impossible to remember everything. So uh, I don't know if you guys ever take notes on our show. I think maybe we should sometimes. Because <laughs> Kareem and I don't always remember what the hell we talk about. We're like, well, what did we talk about last week? Well, yeah, but you just it. play it back and you got it again. Yeah, but it, I still like writing stuff down. It's well, yeah, answer. that's always the greatest because you can reflect back on the things that are written. Just like, um, I didn't understand this, but uh, the morning motivator, Janet, she's now making us make a gratitude list. <laughs> we have to make, write down on paper or on a notepad, 10 things that we're grateful for 
every day. Oh yeah, yeah. You um, know what I do? I've got a. Well, I, I didn't do that. I was losing right. track of it. It was like, mm -hmm. it was like she come on in. Did you make your gratitude list? No. Oh, yeah. And then uh -huh. she like, wrote all over my butt because she's the type of person that that keeps me, you know, focused. Operating that third eye or whatever keeps me focused on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. When she's saying, and she makes me accountable. Just oh like yeah. You do, just like you have already more than once made me accountable on certain things, and I had to actually sit there and stop and think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know what? This guy is so much younger than me, but the wisdom that you possess, and Kareem, you know, I can't take it away from him because he said some wisdom I things too oh, you know, thank you right is the idea that you make people accountable for what they are and that's where they become a success if you don't make them accountable or if you don't have somebody saying hey you know you should tr try changing this just like a young lady told me you need to get a different picture so i took a different picture she said the one you have is all blurry you can't really see you blah 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 they want to see who they're dealing with. Just yeah, like exactly. you go into a store. Yeah. So those people that you're dealing with, they want to see who they're dealing with. They don't want to see a machine feeding them, you know, stuff out. This is what you're going to get. Blah, blah, blah. They want to be able to select it, have a conversation, have a relationship, the whole 10 yards, you know. And I believe that's where civilization is headed down the downfall. If we don't start doing something about building the relationships back up where they belong, the business yeah. is just going to go automated and there's going to be... Well, that's, I, uh, 